Thank you. I, I, I'm already wired. wired. Good morning again, everybody. Um, I um, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to you all today. I'm going to talk about um, uh, work that uh, has been done by C4 over the past um, six or so years, uh, especially, uh, although there was a lot of work done before that on related topics, but primarily based on work done uh, uh, related to China's uh, trade and investment in, in Africa and, its, and the forest-related effects of that, of that um, uh, dynamic. And uh, um, I'm also going to refer back to work I did even before C4 as a doctoral student uh, working on uh, uh, Chinese trade in, in timber in the Peruvian Amazon. So it's kind of a, a, a reflection back over um, over a, a, a period, a number of projects and, and a number of years. Um, so um, just as a, as a general um, uh, comment uh, before I start, um, when you're looking, doing research across different sectors, um, because we're talking about forestry and we're also talking about um, uh, land-based industries that affect forests, um, so work across sectors, work across different cultures in different countries with uh, research teams uh, with very diverse backgrounds. Um, it's uh, one way to do, the, to, 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 to do your research and to be consistent is to take a kind of a grounded theoretical approach and try to ask similar questions, the same questions across all of these cases, but to allow for a lot of different um, methods to be used to test the hypotheses, um, because there are major differences in, in scale and uh, of, of, uh, uh, of d within different uh, industries, geographical scales, social scales, um, companies, company sizes, uh, et cetera, individual um, activities. So we, we, we look at all of these things um, using um, a very flexible methodology, but uh, um, uh, looking, trying to ask the same questions and bringing them together um, through, um, uh, once we see that there's support for certain hypotheses. Um, uh, when we look at, uh, there, there are major problems in definition when we talk about the Chinese, the Chinese market. Um, when we talk about, in, when, when we look at the international literature, the press, and you see uh, the word, uh, uh, Chinese trade, what does that mean? Who's doing Chinese trade? Are we talking about um, uh, companies that are headquartered in China? Are we talking about companies that, that are uh, headquartered where they are but are ethnically Chinese owned? Are those, are, if it's ethnically Chinese owned, are the people um, uh, from mainland China or are they from elsewhere? Uh, so there, there are problems of definition. There's been much confusion uh, in the international literature um, prior to uh, research that um, that uh, that uh, part that we did and partners are doing now, um, and um, uh, there are there's also various units that you can discuss. You can you, that you could use is the unit a forest? Are we looking from forest to forest or forest management unit to forest management unit? Um, are we looking at the national market, China's national market, and how it links to resource, uh, resource sectors overseas? Um, are we talking about the behavior of corporations that are headquartered in China uh, or not, or, 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 or elsewhere? Um, and, um, uh, and then the Chinese market must, is linked in many, many different ways to the natural resources through, through, uh, through, through many non-Chinese channels of, of, of um, uh, market channels as well, from extraction to, to export, uh, to import into China. So, um, so these are, th this, this gives us some idea of the very, di the, the diversity of, of, of ways in which uh, this question has been looked at and also the source of many um, mistakes in, in the uh, analyses that have been done or the reports that have come up often in, in media, um, mistaking uh, the identity of, 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 um, of people um, 
mistaking the head, you know, where, where a company comes from, et cetera. Very, very simple mistakes such as that. Um, so I, I'm going to talk about some of the generalizations that, uh, that, we, that we have found support for, and they're conservative. We're going to, they're, they're, it's a conservative set um, uh, because we're looking across many different uh, cases, many different sectors. Those that seem to be common uh, uh, are, uh, are few, in fact, uh, that differentiate uh, the sort of the nature of the Chinese market and other markets uh, in global resource extraction and in spe specifically mostly timber we're talking about, but uh, um, this, this is also applicable to other resources. Um, so one thing that hap that's happened in, in um, so if we look at the, so what we, what we find in the environmental, uh, in terms of environmental outcomes, um, one strongly supported uh, uh, phenomenon with the growth in the Chinese market over the past few years has been the emergence of, of new timber species in the market. So uh, booms in, in, in species that formerly uh, didn't see high demand internationally. Uh, and this is, um, this is something that's, that's happened in, in a number of cases over, over different countries. Uh, in Peru, there was a, a boom in a, a species called Chihuahuaco or Archido. Um, in um, in um, Africa, there's, a, there's been a great boom in, in demand for specialty species like various kinds of ro rosewoods and, and wenge, et cetera. Now, this is, a, this is an important um, uh, factor in what sort of environmental uh, impact uh, the forest, forest trade has. And that is because um, although sometimes there have been arguments that increasing the number of species in the market can allow uh, more efficient forest management, that assumes that this is happening within very defined forest management units. Um, whereas in less defined forest areas where management is not as clear, in more open access areas, which are common in, in Amazonia, in parts of Africa, um, the, uh, the demand for very specific species uh, can lead to increased expansion into forest areas to look for those species uh, especially. So when demand takes off for one species, it often can drive further expansion into the forest. Uh, and that's been, uh, that, that, ha that, that was found uh, in, in a number of studies, especially in, in Amazonia. Um, uh, now that is not, that's not an effect that's unique to China. That's something that's, that's been seen many times in the past, different, uh, with, with different species going to the U.S. market, to the European market. Uh, however, what's different now is that it's happening, that now China ha is the, the big market for new species. So um, it's, it's not a question of whether it's the first time, it's a question of what's happening in the world now. Um, uh, when it comes to um, uh, social, social effects of um, forest-related trade, uh, um, we found in our field work that there were many, that the, and this is something that has been you know, written about uh, in the global media and the press a lot, um, has to do with employment conditions uh, within Chinese corporations uh, operating in other countries, in, and in this case in Sub-Saharan Africa, there have been cases, there were cases from different sectors. Um, and uh, employment conditions, we found that they are often perceived to be higher um, uh, with potentially Somewhat, somewhat, slightly lower pay and slightly more work. But this also w w was, is likely very, uh, this perception is, uh, is, is likely very much influenced as well by cult cultural perception. Um, and uh, and it's, uh, it's very different from place to place and from case to case. Um, nonetheless, it's very important because of social, the social vulnerability uh, of, um, of the workforce in developing countries. So, um, uh, and, and across extractive industries, uh, 
if you don't, if you, if you take China out of the equation and you look at extractive industries in, in Africa, in Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, in Zambia, in, uh, in, you know, across, the, there, there have been many cases where um, global or international companies uh, from, of European um, or North American background have been implicated in cases, of, in, in problems related to um, uh, the uh, relations with workers and, and the treatment of workers by companies. Uh, so, so this is this this particular case is is um, is definitely something that needs more attention. Uh, there is probably a lot there from case to case, but not necessarily a gen something that can be um, generalized. Uh, when it comes to economic benefits of the Chinese market, and uh, 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 at the current time with the with the great increase in demand from China and the many linkages uh, uh, among different types of companies, different sizes of companies, and uh, different, uh, different sources, different, uh, different uh, production areas, etc. cetera. Um, we found that, uh, the, that currently Chinese buyers are tending to move much higher up the supply chain towards the resource that there's a much greater presence at the current moment in, in especially in timber production areas, uh, uh, in uh, areas where uh, there, there are timbers of interest to the Chinese market. So this is something that I think that can be generalized, and that is that, that the, the prevalence of, um, uh, of buyers from mainland China versus buyers from uh, other countries um, is currently higher, closer to the resource base, and that th and that there's a lot more interaction between those buyers and small-scale producers, often working in the informal sector. Um, uh, now that comes with that comes with uh, different effects, including potential dis uh, benefits of distribution of income from the sector to a more diverse and smaller scale set of actors. It also comes with issues of uh, uh, potential uh, governance problems locally. It comes with, uh, with um, uh, uh, connections to, well, informal sectors which are interpreted as illegal, even if they, in many cases, they might be based in customary systems of, of resource tenure and access. Um, uh, we've, we've seen a number of cases of especially large-scale companies, um, large-scale Chinese companies who are often state-owned companies showing efforts to comply to higher social and environmental standards. Uh, so over time, you can see the uh, discourse on corporate social responsibility uh, being taken up and replicated in the um, uh, certainly in the, um, the, 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 the public um, uh, presentation of, of large Chinese multinational companies. And then looking at it on the ground, especially in one case related to rubber in, in Cameroon, we found that in, a, in, a, in, a, the, in Cameroon the rubber sector uh, was, was largely national at, uh, prior to um, uh, the 80s, and then it was uh, uh, privatized, uh, and it was initially um, uh, bought by, or a, a set of concessions was initially bought by a company from Singapore, and then that company was was uh, purchased by a Chinese corporation um, uh, very recently in the late uh, 2000s, and um, and you can see the the the, the corporate social responsibility. Uh, uh, terminology being used, and also in terms of actions and cons stakeholder engagement, et cetera, you can see that, uh, that w under the new ownership, there is a, a new incorporation of, the, of, 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 of uh, higher standards. Now, uh, that is a, that, that's, a, that's a partly potentially a sign of, of uh, an evolution in the uh, 
in, in the Chinese corporate, um, in Chinese corporate culture. It certainly is. It's also a, t a, 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 a sign of when this is happening, when this, when this uh, corporate uh, takeover is happening. It's happening at a time when CSR overall is becoming more of a, uh, more ado you know, um, generalized in, the, in, in corporate culture. Now, um, finally, just a, a mention on the, the, um, the, the uh, myth of, or the, myth, the sort of the uh, uh, perceptions of, ch of Chinese involvement in what's called uh, large-scale land acquisition or land grabs. Uh, in the project that, 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 that we did in, on China and Africa over a period of a few years, we, we encountered many leads to uh, what uh, were presented as large-scale land acquisitions and generally found that most of them hadn't happened, that they were, they were, that they were something that they, they started, they were grounded in some, uh, some, uh, some, some interaction, maybe a smaller contract for a smaller piece of land, uh, a plan to, do, to implement a much larger project. And then uh, in several cases, those, those projects sort of disappeared over time. And one of the reasons is that when it came down to actually identifying the lands that would be used for those projects, the, the, the governments involved, uh, notably in this happened in Cameroon, it happened in DRC, uh, they, they couldn't identify the, 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 the lands and they couldn't, they couldn't uh, um, sort of untangle the tenure issues uh, and, and allocate those lands eventually to the companies that, that were negotiating to start big oil palm projects or rice projects or or um, or others. So, um, just uh, um, just to sum up very quickly, um, it's um, it's clear that um, there's been a huge amount of new activity on the charts part of uh, the the uh, the Chinese government uh, and institutions that are working on forestry in China and on in, on on environment environmental issues. Um, to support the development of guidelines for, for corporate activity overseas um, in timber um, as well as uh, extractive, other extractive industries and agricultural industries, rubber, oil, palm. Um, and there's been a, there, there have been increasingly uh, attempts and uh, uh, implementation or establishment of bilateral agreements between China and, and, uh, and, and producing countries um, uh, and we and and we see that that there are efforts of companies to to adapt and to we saw there was a boom in uh, chain of custody certification timber certification in China when uh, it, you know starting about uh, six or seven years ago and it and it took off and it increased very quickly. Um, and as I mentioned, we, s we see the, the implementation, the integration of corporate social responsibility standards. But problems of global resource extraction are not, are not easily addressed. Um, there are in, in, in many countries, um, uh, there are long histories of, of conflict over, over land and resources. And the, 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 um, uh, the instruments that are have been designed and implemented to address those problems many times haven't worked in the past uh, or haven't worked fully. So when, when, when we look at these various instruments, uh, including those that are now being developed, I think that um, there, are, there are a few different th things that need to be done. And one is that it needs to be, um, you need to look very closely at how much of a, of a given market, how much of the market do these instruments cover um, and um, so how much of the, how much does a guideline how much do guidelines from the government to companies operating overseas cover um, how many companies do they reach in reality uh, and um, and and then we have to look at the capacity of the institutions to actually uh, to actually um, use them so if it's a question of of a timber legality verification system where is, what is the capacity of the, of the customs authority to, to implement it? What, what, do they, what do they need to see 
how, are, how, how, how will they know? So a real analysis of those capacities and at different levels of the value chain is needed. And then finally, um, uh, uh, it really is, it's very important um, for long-term field-based research um, to, be, uh, to be done in order to, to, to understand the effects at the smaller scales and, uh, and over time. Uh, that, 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 can't, that, that can't be um, uh, overstressed. And that's something that's, um, that's, been, that's actually been, to date, has, has, there has not been enough yet uh, done to really understand not only the, uh, the, the issues on the ground, but also how, how the uh, efforts to address them uh, will, uh, are, are working in terms of institutional capacity to use the instruments and also potential unexpected outcomes of those instruments, such as effects on livelihoods of local people who might be dependent on resources or, um, or increases in, cri in criminality because of um, uh, exclusion of certain users or other potential unexpected outcomes. So uh, I, leave it, I leave it there and uh, can... Uh, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Please join me. A few minutes over, but I admire your courage in even trying to cover this enormous area in, in such a short um, uh, presentation. Um, now we have time for a few questions, and I'd certainly like to encourage also our visitors to pose any questions. Um, are there any questions? Um, up there, Annie here. Uh, Hi, nice to see you back in Bogor. Uh, yeah, I Thank have a you. question. Thanks for your presentations. Uh, <coughs> if I remember correctly, about 10 years ago, there were so many investors from Indonesia uh, doing investment in, uh, in China on this uh, pop, uh, pop and paper uh, material for, you know, for uh, plantations on acacia, I think, and eucalyptus. So the how that have been going now? I mean, how they have been developed in China? Are they, mm. you know, what what's what's happening with their investment? Well, but this is like a big group in Indonesia, like APP and yeah. other group. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm sure others would be better placed to to answer that one. I actually haven't done research on that specifically yet. Um, I did I, I did spend some time in in uh, in the area where in the general area where a lot of the investment in that type of of forest plantation has happened in um, in in southwest uh, China and Guangxi province, and uh, and th that th that area has been there have been um, some some questions about community land rights and not just in relation to Indonesian companies but also in relation to um, uh, at least one European company. Over 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 time, so there have been some 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 questions about how land was transferred from the sort of the collective to uh, and community to 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 and trans you know rights transferred for a certain amount of time to corporations uh, and um, uh, there's also there in terms of the nature of that particular type of forestry. Um, a lot of attention needs to be paid to especially the, the effects of the species chosen and the landscape in which the species are being planted and long-term soil fertility because you see a lot of, you see in, in, in certain, certain parts where the, the, a certain kind of like eucalyptus is planted in the midst of sugarcane plantations and, 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 you, and it has, it's, it's probably not the best configuration. So the configuration of of, of tree plots and the selection of species um, could probably be improved. Thank you. Um, Nico? But I would also encourage our colleagues from the Chinese Academy of Forestry to say something about that. <laughs> Part of this, what you call corporate social 
responsibility or NATO responsibility. In the case of China, do you think the Chinese companies can help to do this, this investment to transition from extractive to productive resources? I'm not talking about plantations, but many ways of producing resources and going beyond all of these, these, these extremes, no? conservation or extraction. In the middle, you have many ways of producing resources within the old one. And what is the science base for that transition? Well, I, th I think that's an a huge area for, for, for research including a research by, 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 um, by Chinese forestry institutions. Um, in, in all, in, in there, there, there are still huge gaps in terms of, in, in terms of knowledge of how to produce um, species from, from, from natural forest areas. Uh, if production in, in, in other than plantation forestry uh, there, there aren't very many species that are in, in tropical forests that are very well understood with the regeneration ecology, the patterns of um, sort of gap dynamics, et cetera, that, that, favor, that favor production over simple extraction. So I think that um, um, especially when a new species or a new set of species becomes um, sort of sees this huge surge in demand, that would be a time to say we need to understand exactly the the, the ecology of, of of these new sp of these new species in the market, and that 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 doesn't that has hasn't happened very much. It's happened in a in a couple of very um, limited cases. Um, a lot of work was done on regeneration of ecology of of, of mahogany sweetenia, um, but uh, there haven't you know most species have been neglected. Good morning, everyone. This I look at this this journey. I hope I will not get the opportunity. I want to ask Louis before Louis. I want to say a few words. First, we are very happy to meet you. I just understood that you have a Chinese person who is in a international view of China's problems. Then we have also a 呃，我们想从另外一个角度啊，我们正在发展啊，从另外一个角度呢，是站在中国的视角，怎么样看待呃全球的林业啊？所以呢，这个那么这两个视角呢，也是今天我们这个这个来拜访大家，拜访这个这个咱们 CIFR 的一个一个我一个新的发现啊。那么我后面要提问的啊。Just now I read the agenda. It's found, uh, I found that there's no opportunity for me <laughs> to share my uh, opinions. So I wanted to take advantage uh, some minutes before I uh, pose any questions. And I first, uh, I am very glad, glad to visit Cipher. And just now I found that the uh, Cipher has a team yeah, specifically yeah, interested in China to study the, uh, uh, the, the trade between China and uh, other countries. And the, uh, it is very good, yeah, to uh, for you to study uh, China, the issue of China from the uh, your uh, respect uh, uh, perspective. But I think that we also want to uh, see the, um, the the relationship of China and other countries from another angle, and we are more concerned about the global forestry with the, the uh, from the uh, perspective of China. So I think it's very interesting to uh, discuss the two angles, two, two perspectives, to uh, look at the same issue. 好了，那我给路易斯提个问题啊，就是这个、呃、刚才谈到您谈到的供应链的问题啊，因为供应链在这个呃，在中国这块呢也是非常重要啊。一方面呢，就是啊，打击非法采伐需要我们把供应链要做到。尽量的透明化啊，这是一个想法啊。那么同时呢，市场的发育呢，又希望供应链越来越集中啊，这个供应越来越集中
那么在这两个平衡面前呢，一方面政府需要，啊，政府的意愿可能是需要，我们把这个供应链啊，这个让它可追溯啊，越来越越来越透明啊。另一方面呢，市场呢，那又要求市场呢，大家这个这个，呃，又感觉到这个一定要把它集中起来啊，好多的东西啊，好多的这个这个这个物流啊，要更加集中。那么在这样的情况呢？就是您的观点，怎么样平衡这样的关系，才能更好的满足我们这个呃非法贸易这样的要求？嗯、um, ，I have a question. Uh, uh, I just a lot of uh, supply chain is has been machined a lot of time. I think it's very important. Uh, as a a result of the uh, combat, combating illegal logging, we want to achieve transparency of the supply chain, which is yeah, uh, very often emphasized by different parties. But uh, you know that as uh, the, the whole industry develops, it seems that uh, the supply chain becomes more and more complex, and a lot of things will be concentrated for the, uh, for the supply chain. That means that uh, the very, very detailed division of labor that make the, uh, the supply chain is very, very complex. So uh, from, uh, on one hand, we want to, yeah, the supply chain can be um, uh, trackable and uh, uh, traceable, and, uh, and on, the b on the other hand, we want the more central, uh, concentrated market for the supply chain. And uh, we ha so I want to ask how to balance the two sides what to, to achieve the transparency of supply chain as well as to uh, foster the developed market for, this, uh, for the, the whole industry. Okay, um, well, first of all, it's an honor to have uh, the head of the um, forest products, uh, uh, the, the China Forest Products Trade and Development Center um, visit us at, at C4. So, um, so I'd like to welcome you, especially um, uh, Professor Chen Xiaozhu. Okay. Um, and thank you for your, for your, um, uh, for your, your comment and question. On the first comment, I agree with you completely. Nothing could be more important than developing and, uh, and building a, a Chinese perspective on global forestry. And um, I think that that's, um, that's uh, a, a very um, important role of, of, um, of the researchers that are visiting us here today. So um, I would also, um, uh, in, in, in answer to your question, I. You, the, you, uh, you partly answered the question in the question by saying that as you, as you explore further and further, it becomes the, the, the governance or the, and the management of supply chains becomes more and more complicated. The more you look into, the more you find. And uh, that's partly why I, I, I said that I think it's very important to, met, to try to assess the capacity, the institutional capacity um, of uh, uh, government, especially government regula regulators, on in producing countries and in importing countries, um, uh, at different areas in those in those chains, um, because simply prescribing a solution without understanding if the capacity exists to implement it um, uh, won't work in many cases. So any instrument probably only addresses a piece of it. And, and, uh, if it, and if you want to address the whole thing, you have to keep looking at different pieces. It, it, it's inevitable you, that, to, that you have to look at different pieces over time. Um, when it comes to the development, to, to how to achieve more transparency and also um, uh, allow for development, I think that also there, there, there are the process of, of examining value chains more closely also involves understanding uh, benefit flows. And, and then we, we need to ask, when we talk about development, for whom are we, whose development are we talking about? 
the develop so so the, there really needs to be attention and this the 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 the, the, um, the impetus for for this kind of inquiry can come from many different places definitely a lot of um, uh, um, the uh, interests related to the industry belong in pr producer countries and so uh, there are you know we need to ask what's the state of research what's the state of policy uh, and uh, and how does that serve um, the interests of, of, of of people who depend on forest resources for their livelihood in producer countries. In uh, processing countries and consumer countries, the same questions um, are applicable. And then putting those things together is, is no simple thing. So these, 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 these new efforts to develop bilateral um, uh, uh, instruments that involve also, some of them also involve you know, continuing dialogue and, and negotiation. Those those processes are very important, um, and so lots of progress uh, has been made, and hopefully more is coming. Thank you. Thank you very much. If there's, is, I don't see any other very pressing questions. Um, so since we've gone a bit over time already, I would like to thank very much all of you. First of all, I'd like to thank Louis. Thank you. Secondly, I'd like to thank all of you for coming and all of you for participating, and a special thank you to our visitors from Beijing. Um, and I would like to also encourage you, when you go back um, to wherever you, you um, uh, go back to, uh, please remember that, the, that both this event and all of our Science at 10 are actually on the C4 website, since we have recorded them all. So please continue with, with sort of seeing what we are talking about here at C4. And it's been a, it's, it's been a pleasure and an honor to have you all here. Anyway, thank you all very, very much. <laughs>